some of you were curious how to make a modern lo-fi house song, so let's dive into it. To start things off, you're gonna want a chord progression. I've gone with a nice collection of guitar sounds. If you want to see how to make realistic guitar tones from MIDI in future episodes, just let me know in the comments below. For this track, I'm starting things off with the Ample Sound Guitar L on the Karma Finger preset, but I'm also pairing that with Tim Henson's archetype from Neural DSP, and this is on the Arc Echo preset. This gives this sound that I'm in A sharp minor. So you can kind of hear and I have a little bit of chorus and this kind of bouncy feeling. And that bouncy feeling will come to later. It's coming from the overarching melodic group. That's EQ'd and I'm pairing that guitar with another ample sound guitar, the Semi Hollow, with that same Tim Henson archetype. And this is a more muted uh, guitar preset. So you can hear a little bit of delay there. And then one more guitar on top of that, another semi hollow body with more of a lead sound. Now you want some warmth under that, so I've just coupled that with some serum chords. Again, A minor for everything, and pretty much copying the same chords, although these are more quantized. You can tell that they're very quiet in the mix, we can hardly hear them. They're just there for tone. So as I said, there's an overarching group. There's actually two. There's the guitars group, which has chorus ensemble and a little bit of light EQ. And then a melodic group to which I have Kickstart 2 and Golfos. Kickstart 2 gives that pump in side chain effect and Golfos creates a little less mud. But I also have this chain in the middle, which is just doing quite a heavy bit of compression. So from there, the easiest thing to do is maybe start writing my drums. And I've done pretty much all of this with the Kilobyte kit. If you're not aware, the Kilobyte kit is my synthesized drum kit that's available at the Patreon. I plan to make a whole series of these types of synthesized drums. Their footprint is smaller than that of a kick drum sample, but you get an entire drum kit to which you can tune and mold the way you like. The only thing that I've added to this kit is the Palmer's Max for Live device. So this is like hand claps that I've added a gate and a vocoder and a little bit of EQ and some align delay too as well. And this has a pretty quantized pattern, although I have pulled those Palmer's claps out a little bit. And the drums sound like this. You can hear a big splash of reverb at the end. That's all part of the arrangement style. You wanna create tiny moments of excitement by exploding the snare or adding delays here and there. I have a video on transitions where I use this project as an example. If you pair these two videos together, you'll be flying. So I've got my Kilobyte kit there, and then I'm just using the shaker sound on top, just an offbeat hi-hat pattern. And then a little tambourine to add just a little bit of sparkle. From there, it's all about combining different vocal patterns. So you can see that I have these different vocal chops from various packs here, and I'm just trying to blend them in the most in-keeping way. So I'm trying to make sure that I use either similar EQ styles, or for the tracks that don't have reverb and auto-tune, I'm adding reverb and auto-tune. <laughs> It's very simple, but I automate that middle vocal throughout. So it goes from a dark place to a brighter place and then back down again. Once again, modulation all the way through is gonna make a massive difference to your song. I have the bass down here, which is just a Serum Reese bass that I downloaded from Splice. This is the SFED1 FSS Reese bass. At the beginning of this example, I've made sure that it has an extreme telephone EQ sound. So we don't really get its presence. But as we build into the track, I'm gonna ease this off a little bit so it becomes more expansive and a lot darker. 
And you can see that I've got a dynamic EQ here. This is attached to my kick drum. So basically if I come up to my kilobyte kit and I come over to my kick drum, you can see this envelope follower. I've got a short on how to connect an envelope follower to an EQ so you can get a really dynamic EQ and it's way more precise than a sidechain. I'll link it in the top right. Not too obvious is this little like kind of brass horn serum lead that I've probably downloaded from Splice once again. And that just plays between two notes, the F to start and then the D sharp to follow. When we go into the drop, I play it a little bit less often and I include those explosions of reverb. Every now and then throughout your arrangement, you wanna mix things up by some other sounds, other instruments, and I have this little vocal ooh. Hold on, wait. This video is sponsored by DistroKid, of course. I love using DistroKid. They make it so easy for me to get my music on literally over 200 music platforms, which would be so difficult if I was left to my own devices. Not many people have realized this, but they've paired with Bandzoogle as well. So when you have your DistroKid account, you can actually click the Bandzoogle plus DistroKid tab, which is found in goodies. And from here, start building your own artist website. It just ups the professional quality that your fans will find after they find you at Spotify. Include it in your about page. If you want to get 7% off your first year and support the show, then use the affiliate link in the description below. And I have this little vocal ooh. I chopped that up from a much longer sample and you can find that longer sample here on Splice. And then I've just added tons of delay and reverb. Underneath, I've got a serum instrument playing this arpeggiated pattern which follows the chords. And it's very glass-like to start off with. You can see here in serum, that I've actually automated that uh, glass lid noise to come down over time. That means in the drop, it's a lot closer to the listener there's less reverb and uh, it's a little bit more muffled, but we do have a very extreme EQ8 there. And like I said, that mix was turning down over time from the beginning, so it's extremely dry at this point. Finally, just to add a little bit of emotion, we've just got these notes from the piano down here right at the end, they're really low in the mix. Some Valhalla reverb. And again, quite an extreme EQ8 here. And as I mentioned in my transition video, you wanna bring in each of these elements one by one so that your listener isn't overwhelmed. If we were to drop them straight into this section, it's awfully overwhelming for the listener. There's so much information here to take on. So make sure that you arrange your track so that your listener can better appreciate the build to all of those elements. Again, I've included that in my transition video and I've got this whole project available at the Patreon so you can download it and siphon through it yourself. I hope this video was helpful, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>